you know, honestly, I'm a what? little nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> But just a little nervous. I know. I'm just like sitting here trying to chill and calm my nerves. But there's always that slight flutter in my heart. That's that, like, that, okay, we're that doing slight, something. That slight so. flutter? <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> do, you, do you need a little, um, you want a little breath before we, before we get in? I can play a little sure, bit Sure. That sounds you. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I like to, to play a little bit, get a little respiration and meditation before the conversation. So we can do that if you like. That oh, my goodness. You you cracked lovely. me up, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get this thing Good. here. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Of course. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Do you you, you feel a little breath in there? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes. Way more calm, you know. Some, Very you good. Know, sometimes we need that little breath break. I I call it sometimes like a breath breakfast, you know? Like like a mm -hmm. like an air appetizer. <laughs> yes. You know, just to just to get that meal in and get that feel in, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, our breath is the most important thing we can eat. So, oh, man. you know. Talk about I it, you know? That. So, Rachel, yeah. last time we spoke, I know I, you were in East Bay, right? So you were, right, East Bay, yep. East California. Bay California. You, you said you were concluding your chapter, you know, writing the, the next the next page is in your book. So where are you today, if you were in East Bay? Yeah. So ah. today, I'm in Utah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, um, you know, last time we spoke, I finished up everything I needed to um, and then headed on over to Utah, which is my home state. That's where I was born and raised. Um, and, you know, been spending the winter here um living with a friend helping watch their dog um who's thankfully growing up getting out of his anxiety and that kind of thing so if you hear dogs barking it's not my fault it's the dog still interrupted divine timing always but um yeah so i'm in utah mm -hmm. and it's been really healing for me it's been really uh and it's healing on very subtle layers but very why, intense why very profound so it's really good mm. why intense um i think because i'm finally getting to a lot of the subconscious things that were instilled in me from early on childhood um and i'm finally allowing those things to come up to be seen and felt and understood and integrated into my mm. being and so wait let me hear you correctly you said you were you're like integrating subconscious things from your childhood? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So like when those things come up, um, 
it's you know it, it's it's one thing to have an awareness of the things right and then it's another thing to then take that awareness and let it mm. integrate into your system and i feel like the word integration we all have different maybe we all have different meanings about it, but I kind of take it to be like, okay, now with this new wisdom, this new knowledge that I have, how am I going to live my life from that knowledge versus the old wisdom that I had that was faulty, the old wisdom that I had that wasn't true necessarily, but I believed it to be. Um, so it's taking this new awareness and living from that awareness versus okay. the past so almost yourself. like you're you know reshaping your mentality you're living in a new reality <laughs> absolutely yes absolutely i, heard you <laughs> <laughs> I, I did <laughs> so what does that yes. process look like you know when you're coming into that awareness and, and really going through that integration what does that look like for you Uh, so what it looks like for me is, you know, I'll spend some time with my family and in spending that time, I receive, um, I receive things, little bits of information. Maybe I didn't understand it before, um, you know, when I lived here, cause I grew up here from age zero to 18. Right. And then I moved away. Um, and so I'll receive some information. And then when I come home and I start to process things that's when it really kind of like seeps into my psyche and I'm able to like understand it and heal it um and then what would be the next step after that just really like a, it's a lot of allowing allowing that wisdom that even like a lot of the wisdom too isn't right. conscious to me it's all subconscious still uh but it's bringing up and shining light on those subconscious beliefs um and pulling it forward. So I'll give you an example. And this is very, it was really sweet and tender to me, but it was like super simple. Okay. So I go for Sunday dinner and they, you know, we set the table and, um, so it was like a couple weeks or like a, maybe a month into me doing this routinely. Right. And my older sister, she's only about 18 months older than me. Um, she noticed I don't drink water during meals. I just don't, so she didn't place a cup when she set the table for me. And to me, that was like extremely powerful because I felt seen and heard and validated and just, and I received so much love from my sister in her act of not setting a cup at the table for me. And it wasn't something that she had even talked about. Like we didn't discuss it until after the fact. And it wasn't until again, later I came home that night and it like hit me of how profound and deep that awareness that she noticed me she saw my habits without even me having to express or say anything she noticed i just don't pour myself a glass i don't drink water while i'm eating a meal so she didn't even put the cup down like whether it it, it was really profound in that simple simple act and it really hit me deep and i shed some tears of like re, like felt loved because of this and it was wow. so simple. Wow. <laughs> it you really know, they, was. They do say, thank you for yeah. sharing that. Because they do say that, like, the the little things are the big things. You know? That yes. the little are the big yeah. things. That for somebody, it could be so small to somebody else, but actually so big for yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And that's what it felt like in that wow. moment, for sure. So... And I've since I I expressed that to her because because I was talking to my family about like okay what's what are your love languages you know what are ways that we can show each other more love and I told I shared that with my family at that time because it was just it was big for me even though it was, what, was such she a simple little thing. Surprised when you <laughs> so. expressed that to her. I don't think she was um, like you know, because it's definitely in her nature to be very observant. Um, and that could be a trauma response, because I come from the same family, I kind of understand. Um, so she wasn't surprised that I think maybe she was. Mm -mm. What was her response? She wasn't surprised. She was just more like, Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. I understand. So 
she was more on the same like cool. under understanding level cool. as I you am. Know, so it feels good, especially with our loved ones, you know, to be able to feel acknowledged, to be able to feel seen, to be heard, you know, and mm -hmm. to just have that reflection and have that deep connection on that level, on that level where yeah. you don't even have to speak, you know, but you're already received. Yep. Oh, you know? I love. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. I know. That was really good. When really it comes nice. to shining yeah. the light on our subconscious and even figuring out our, our triggers and, and different trauma responses and different things, you know, like you said, it sometimes we we don't see these things because I guess the subconscious it assumes that they're below the, the conscious level of awareness. Why would you say that mm -hmm. most people or maybe a lot of people might find it very challenging to shine the light on their own subconscious with intention. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think there's a level of awareness that we have to have inside of ourselves and inside of our body to be able to shine that light. So I feel like uh, for most people, it gets easier the more mindful you become. So the less you get rid of all the external... Um, chatter in your conscious waking day, the easier it is to actually be conscious of your subconscious um, in the day to day. So the less I have to worry because I have fear, stress, anxiety, all that kind of stuff, the less that happens, the more I'm actually able to tune into my body and feel into my body and then ask the questions of like, oh, what is this that I'm feeling? Why is it that I'm feeling this? Um, you know, what what happened in that moment that made me feel this way and that's the those are like the the questions that you can ask to get into that subconscious to be able to shine that light because i really do feel like as we're working in our subconscious it is um it's when we're able to ask the right questions mm. that we get that shift so sometimes it's just knowing what to ask and other times it's just being open and inquisitive about what it is that you're feeling. Uh, you know, so if, if you have fear, why are you fearful? What is causing that fear? What is, you know, what is it in that moment that's causing you to be afraid? So like when we first got on the call, I had a little bit of, you know, anxiety a little bit. Um, but that was just because I still have a little bit of stage fright, which I'm getting over. I'm totally, totally fine. Totally normal. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm wondering how we can go a little bit deeper into this uh, conversation of shining. It, it really is like bringing your consciousness into the subconscious and then also the subconscious into your consciousness. Um, but it's kind of like, yeah, how do you do that? How do you how do we express that? Because I really feel like it's all in the questions, wow, the questions that wow. you ask so yourself. Questions are the answer. I feel like, and yeah. It was cool it how you said that, Rachel. You were almost like, uh, it was almost like less is more. You know, like when you have less of this, mm -hmm. you naturally have more of that. Yeah, it is very true. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really so it's almost is. like when you remove what no longer you know disturbs you or no longer perturbs you that you bring in more of the things yeah. that serve you absolutely very well said i love it <laughs> i love it when you rhyme you make, it's so wonderful make it easy just, for me oh. you know <laughs> you make what it easy you? you know it's just it's interesting to just come to these solutions and these conclusions within ourselves to realize that we're not hopeless, we're not helpless. And, you know, we don't ever have to feel worthless, that we can always feel that we are in service and that we are on purpose, you know, with the things that we have mm -hmm. within. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to ask you because, you know, we, we touched on it a little bit about your journeys, but who would you say that, you know, Rachel Free would be today without like the Maya Healing Center and, and different things that you've, you've you go through and you grow through throughout life, who would you be today? Well, I wouldn't be the person that's sitting here in front of you. I do know that because I know that throughout our entire life's journey, so even all of the 
So not just the healing center, right, but all of the traumas and all of the accidents and all of the, you know, the health issues and every single thing um, that I've gone through in my lifetime has made me this person that I am. Um, and so all of the things that I uh, hated or wished I could change as a child, all of the things that I never loved or anything like that, all of those things because of like, not necessarily overcoming them, but kind of like embracing them and understanding them about me has made me this person. So it's really our whole life's journey. And this is true for everyone, I feel like. Our whole life leads us to this exact moment, whatever the moment might be, whenever the moment might be, leads us to this moment. And in this moment, we are, um, well, I, I am free. That is, that is who I am by, by birth, by name. And it's actually taken me a whole journey to embrace that and feel comfortable with that and being like, you know what? Wow. Like I've been given this name at birth and didn't fully understand what it meant until I let myself mm. truly be free and be free from what other people told me or be free from what my limitations were be free from the cages that i had built inside my own head um now some of those cages were built and reinforced by others too but i allowed them and so in unlocking those, those things about myself that's when it was like okay yes now i understand what true freedom means now i truly understand what it means for wow. me to be right wow. free. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. This is so powerful just listening to you, you know, just listening to your words and just your enthusiasm and your energy, you know, just the the vitality for life for living and this energy that you're giving to yourself as well in such a way and just all encompassing embodying freedom, you know? When you were speaking Rachel just now, mm -hmm. I got a picture in my mind. I feel like sometimes when you speak, you paint pictures, you know, and just now mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. almost like, I know why the caged bird sings, you know, it's like, if you've ever seen, there was an illustration, like a, a little small yellow bird, almost like a Tweety bird, like on a window seal. And it's looking out the window and the window is open. It's wide open and the bird could fly away at any time, but there's like a little small cage on the head of the bird like the cage the cage is just mm. big enough to fit on the bird's head the bird is not inside a big cage it's just a small small you know and it's mm -hmm. on the bird's head and the bird is just there on the windowsill and it's just there you know and at any point it could fly away but it's just it just stays there you know so it was like you embraced your freedom yeah. you you embraced your name you know Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And as you were sharing that, what was coming to my mind too is then being the person seeing the mm. bird with the cage on. And so that's also part of our perspective that we can change. So not only are we the little bird that has this little fake cage on it, but we're also the person seeing the bird. And so that was, I feel like being the observer too of everything was huge in my healing because to be able to take that one step back and be like oh if that little bird with this cage is also me but i'm also being able to see it from a different perspective right. how do i really want to be right that's another question you know yeah. that's a big question that's a that's a great question to ask you know and like you said it all begins with our questions how do we really want to mm -hmm. be you know and what what does yeah. free really mean to me yeah mm -hmm. yeah so to be the observer to be the witness to be the bird with the cage but also to be looking at yourself you know at at different ages and different mm -hmm. stages throughout life you said that years ago or earlier on there were things that were really challenging or really tough for you to face but also for you to ultimately embrace 
So what was it about yourself that mm -hmm. you felt was one of the most challenging for you to embrace about that? Hmm. Well, I will say one of the most challenging things that I had to embrace um, and really like change my whole perspective on too was this resentment that I had. Um, it was really strongly directed towards my mother. I had a lot of resentment towards my mother because I felt like she could have, you know, raised us differently, done things differently, like all these different things, right? And it wasn't until I had a really like open and honest conversation with my grandmother, my mother's mother, and talking to my grandma about, you know, what was it like for you raising all these kids and having, you know, all of this. And just to hear her truth and honesty of like the challenges that she faced, um, the difficulties, um, you know, I even asked her, like, what would you do differently if you could go back and do things differently? But then in that conversation, having this understanding that my mother also never received and was given the things that I was resentful for her not giving me. So in my mind, I was like, of course, how could she have given me something that she herself never had received? Or her, her or she had never known. So it really was in that moment, the acceptance of my mother really was doing all that she knew how to do um, to raise us. And so in that moment, too, there was a whole bunch of forgiveness of just like, whoosh, I will just wash that away because I don't need to hold on to that resentment any longer. So it was something yeah. that had to be accepted that that even she had been neglected? Mm-hmm. Even she didn't get the childhood that I felt like I deserved, right? So even she in all that, you know, she had her life situations. And so in her life situations, that of course is gonna frame how she and what she does for me and her and all of our us, all of her kids, right? So it really was that acceptance of like they really are doing the best they can with all that they have, all the information that they've been given. Um, and, and to, you know, our, our, my parents anyway, uh, grew up in the fifties and the sixties, right? And so definitely there is less talk of uh, healing and less talk of going to therapies and less talk of even mindful, conscious mothering and parenting, right? So it's almost like the acceptance too of my parents had to go through all of that hardship to be able to pave a new way for us and our generation. Um, and then sometimes I even like, to think of like okay all the things that i'm going through and all the things that i have to go through are paving a new way for the future generations the generations that haven't even been right. born yet right so in what way do you feel like that has given you even gratitude for growing up in this era right now you know you know that mm -hmm. yeah it it has given me a lot of gratitude and it also helps me stay present and focused in the moment like I don't have to be living in the past and I don't have to be living in the future there really is this beautiful gift that comes when we can be fully yes. present in yes. the moment and I think that's what you told me one of the uh the well the last time that we spoke you mentioned something that that is where where change takes place in the moment you know that that's actually yeah. where we have the the biggest change or the ability to i think you put it like rewiring our our neurological system or something like that you you talked about us being able to to have that profound change in the moment yeah yeah mm -hmm. this yeah this is so profound yes you know with your travels because i know you've traveled a lot rachel and you said that from zero to 18 you were in utah 
I've only been to Utah twice. Mm -hmm. I went to Zion with a friend, and we were we were hiking around Zion, and then I went to Salt Lake City before I went to a Vipassana center uh, nearby. And you know those experiences were really profound. But also, you've done an entire circle around the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. So there mm -hmm. was was that like a road trip, yeah. or what was that? That was a road trip. I took myself. I took the car. I just started driving. Um, so yeah, I just kind of like mapped it out and was and really mapped it out and like feeling it out. I'm like, okay, which way do I want to go? Because I knew my destination was East Coast. I want to go to the East Coast. Doesn't matter how I get there. You know, I didn't want to go through Wyoming because oh, that's boring. Didn't want to go through Colorado because eh, whatever. So I went north. I just from Utah went straight up through, um, what is it, Idaho and into Montana. And then from Montana, just started to drive east. And it was really fun. It was a fun experience because, um, like, to see the different landscapes, you, you I mean, you kind of just see them, especially when you're driving long distances and you're trying to get to a place, you just see it through the highway. So it's not like you're actually, like, stopping and, I didn't actually stop like for multiple days in certain locations until I got to a place that I was like, okay, yes, this is where I want to stay. But I remember it was, I went through North Dakota and North Dakota is so interesting because as I'm traveling through the, you know, from West to East, it starts out as desert and like kind of prairie land. So very, so I'm very familiar with this living in the desert. So I was like, okay, this is kind of interesting. And then it turns into like, marshy like swamps that are like blue and green and then it gets like super lush and i'm like all of this is in north dakota like that is so great that's so crazy um so it was really fun too because then i was kind of thinking about the earth and how you know i'm sure if you go from like north to south there's like sections of desert or prairie or whatever it is or sections of the green marshy land so it was just kind of interesting to like get a different understanding of even earth and how you know how she looks different <laughs> you know from one little place to another place um yeah I and i love that i don't know what else to say about that. that it was really just fun even hearing of your travels and hearing of your discoveries in these different landscapes because even just connecting with the earth or really just getting a new perspective of the planet what do you feel like most people take for granted when it comes to how much is really out there you know because we we hear a lot of things like i'm sure you've heard you know if if you don't travel if, if life is like a book or if the world is like a book and you don't travel then you've only really read like one page you know so I know people that even mm -hmm. at an early age were in my neighborhood. And to this day, you know, over two decades later, they're still in the same neighborhood, you know? So what do you feel mm -hmm. like people might take for granted about, you know, really going out there and seeing all there is to see? You know, it, it really is just, you take your whole life for granted, I feel like, because when you do kind of get out and you see how other people live and you see how, whether it's, I don't ever like to use the words good or bad now, but like whatever, even if it's, um, if it's different from you, which everyone does live a different life from you, I feel like that is important to see and really understand because then you can come back to your homeland and and see it differently and feel it differently and you almost have this deeper appreciation for where you currently are especially if you love where you're at um you have that deeper sense of it's an understanding it really is um eye-opening to just to travel even if it is like go to the neighboring city or go to the neighboring state like just go a little bit farther out just to experience it it doesn't have to be scary you don't have to go all the way across the united states you don't have to go to another country just a little bit you know it really helps to um 
guess it's a perspective shift. It really helps to shift your perspective, be able to see things differently. And at the very least, you're going to appreciate even more sure. where it is. For sure. You are. Thank you for that testimony, because I agree with you, Rachel. They say that, you know, when you when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. You know? <laughs> yes. So it, yes. it makes so much sense because, you know, another thing is that I love the ways in which you are divinely guided and how you listen to your intuition. You, you have like a whole spirit team. You have like a team that guides you, but also you just understand when you need to rest, you know, when the energy needs to be expressed, when you need to go somewhere else, you know, where you need to stay here, when this is a safe space or a, or a safe place for you mm -hmm. and you can go ahead and lay your head and, or go ahead and keep going like you said you didn't stop until you knew that this was where you needed to be and has it always been yep. like that for you <laughs> oh no definitely not no. Uh, <laughs> definitely not i was de i was shut off to a lot of the you know spirit guidance uh, for a while, actually, you know, I felt like I was numb. Um, and my, you know, so we have our fight, flight, or freeze. So I was definitely frozen. I was in a frozen state of emotion where it wasn't mm -hmm. safe for me to feel anything. Um, and so it wasn't until I started my healing process, my healing journey of like, okay, it's safe to feel this emotion. It's safe to even express this emotion. Um, that that's when I got more in tuned with my body and with this, you know, my spirit team. You're right. I have a big spirit team. I feel like we all have a big spirit team. It's just how in tune are we to that team um, and to those people? Um, and so it took, you know, it took some years to get there and I'm still learning. I'm still in the process of learning and growing and trusting because uh, there's even been times since I've been here in Utah where I'm like, why am I here? What is it for? Um, and then, of course, the answer comes through of like, I'm doing healing work. This is why I'm here right now is to be in this deep dive of healing, um, not just for me, but for my ancestry as well, for my family, for, you know, people that have similar that resonate with me people that have um similar energy as i am so it's like when i heal i'm helping others heal and when mm. others heal yes. they're helping me We're all heal. connected you know oh if it wasn't always mm -hmm. that way you know when would you say rachel that it started to change or that you you found it necessary to to be more in tune with that spirit team and to be guided in that way when did that really shift for you um well i've gone through a few stages right so the early stage i was healing in like 2016 2017 right and i was in a really bad relationship at the time where again it wasn't safe for me to feel any emotion at all um unless of course it was his emotion and anyway um and so it took me actually going to a hypnotherapist to get comfortable with even like going inward to express um it took me um it took me expressing my feelings and then being validated in my feelings even if it, like just having someone say i see you i hear you that's validation and that that was huge for me um and then it wasn't until like finally i was like i am done with this relationship i cannot be in here anymore um and then leaving that that also was at the next stage of my healing right so being able to be separate from this person being able to really understand who i am versus who they are or we were was really helpful and then i would say even like getting into more of the you know spiritual side where i can actually feel my guides and feel that energy and like in its tangible it's something like i could feel it as a ball as i'm holding something um i would say that was maybe in like 2018 2019 when that first started to turn on um and then it's just been a whole process of 
understanding it, learning how I process energy, learning how I help shift people's energy. Um, yeah, there's, it's just, yeah. it's been a journey. Yeah. It's been a whole process. Thank you for like, sharing that journey, yeah. you know, and thank you for just opening us up to your process and, and how it's been for you. Because even like hypnotherapy, you know, I'm fascinated about this. I've never done this, but if one were to ask, you know, what does hypnotherapy entail? How would you describe it? You know, the way that it works and who would you recommend for hypnotherapy? Mm. So I'll tell you how it worked for me. Um, so it was someone that I knew and I trusted, a uh, very loving soul, um, still hold her very tender and dearly in my heart. Um, and she, so what she would do is, you know, you get comfortable either sitting up, laying down, but then she takes you and guides you through kind of like a meditation where you're going down into earth to attach and ground yourself to earth before you begin your journey right before you begin moving forward um and so for me the process actually started pretty small like um you know attaching feeling safe that was perfect that was great that was something i needed and then kind of like going on a path you know she's like imagining you're on a path what do you see what do you smell what do you sense um and so it took you know over time for me to actually grow that and so we would go into like a safe space that i created um and at first it was just like it was a little small, you know, like, okay, this feels good. And then eventually it got bigger and then like, oh, now a house appeared and like, oh, now there's like this other stuff. So it was over time helping me get comfortable and safe in my own psyche, in my own subconscious, right? Um, and I would, I would really recommend hypnotherapy to people who feel like they first of all, need someone to hold their hand and walk them through uh, whatever it is, whether it's fear or anxiety, or maybe they are in an abusive relationship and they don't feel safe outside, you know, they, they need a safe space. Um, it was really helpful and profound in helping me get comfortable with myself and get comfortable, um, like get comfortable in my own mm -hmm. mind, my own psyche. Wow. That was wow. really a beautiful helpful. explanation, you know, just to be able to feel safe in your own psyche. <laughs> I love how you put that mm -hmm. in your own psyche, because yeah. it sounds like you were able to create and develop and even cultivate your own safe space. You know, it sounded like you were engaging a lot of your senses. You were saying that they were mm -hmm. like, what do you see? What do you smell? What can you feel? What can you, like they were engaging those senses within you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that also helps kind of, I think, open up and help me understand like what my clear, what my clairs are, what my clear senses are. Um, so I'm definitely more of a, uh, a feeler. I feel things in my body. Um, I'm also, claircognizant where just things pop in and I know things. Um, so in, in her asking those questions, it gave me the ability to then open up and develop. So not like I don't really smell things ever. That's just not something. But in her asking that, it's like, okay, what do you what do you sense? What do you feel? What is it that you're you're getting at? Um, and that helps the individual develop versus it versus if you were to say it in a different way of like right. tell me what you smell nothing you know so that kind of seems a different thing like do you smell anything or are you smelling something is there something here for you what do you sense like that's a i feel like that's a really beautiful way of saying it. it's like what do you sense because sometimes it's a it's a body sensation like, a, oh, I'm feeling that flutter in my heart. Um, or it's like, oh, I feel heavy in my gut, you know? Um, so it's really, again, in the, in the way that we ask and the questions, how we ask it, uh, it helps us 
develop okay. our own okay. sense okay. of self. So that's important. So not only what you ask, but how you ask it. Oh okay. yes, definitely. So I want to I want to share this because it was really helpful when one of my friends mm -hmm. asked it or said it in this way, of like Jerome, if I were to ask, why did you wear that sweater today? You know, versus what mm -hmm. inspired you to wear that sweater today? <laughs> to. <laughs> 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 so why can sometimes feel in, in um mm -hmm. accusative like i'm accusing you of something why did you wear that versus mm. what made you wear that um it's just the what kind of has a softer way of getting to that information and makes mm. the person less defensive okay so these are almost like soft skills you're using your soft skills, yes. you know, so so that the the conscious mind doesn't like, you know, put up a wall, put up a barricade. Like, why I, am I being? Why am I being you attacked right now? Attack. What did I do? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's going exactly. straight into the subcart. It's with a question. So once again, we circle back. Questions are the answer. You know? But it's, it's also how you mm -hmm. ask the questions. So redefine yes. your mind, you know? Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And it only takes a certain amount of time to have that redefine, you know, and to be even more inclined. Would you say that that's, that safe space that you had that manifestation where you felt all of those sensations using your imagination can you go back to that safe space anytime you want to today? Oh, okay. Um, yes and no. <laughs> um, I only say that because it was kind of interesting. This is, mm, I'm, ch I'm trying to tune in if I can share this. I feel like I can, because I feel like it might be helpful to some people. So that safe space that I had created later on got burned down and I, I know it was kind of crazy because it all came to me in like visuals, which I'm, I'm not a strong visual person, uh, but it happened because of me giving access to my safe space to other people mm -hmm. that weren't necessarily safe. And so even in that imagination, it got burned down and I've had to rebuild my safe space. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Thank you for sh thank you for being vulnerable, you know, and sharing that. I would have never known that. I I didn't even know that was possible, you know. I didn't know either yeah. until it happened. Wow. <laughs> so But you've had to rebuild yeah. that space internally. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's almost and it's not the exact same space either, obviously, because it was almost like in my imagination, it was almost like a huge forest fire, like taking everything out. Um, and so it was kind of the imagery that I got was like me holding my um, inner child and like running from this fire. Right. And so now I've had to to it's almost like starting completely over in a different land in a different location um and so that safe space still has a tender place in my heart but it's definitely not the same it is you know burnt down to the ground wow. um and so i've i've but but that feeling of that safe space is, just, is still here and i'm able to take that feeling and cultivate it and grow it even more right. where I'm okay. currently at. So rebuilding that foundation, you know, within mm -hmm. the imagination, mm -hmm. would you say like, that that's almost like a psychic trauma? Like, was that another kind of trauma that happened with the burning down of that safe space that you created internally? You know, what like, would you what would you call that? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would call it but it definitely well it's growth that's for sure that's one thing I would call it is 
you grow from these types of situations. And what were the emotions um, like, you know, with not, yeah, go ahead. Oh, it was, okay. It was intense. It was really intense. You know, some people call it dark night of the soul. It was definitely like that period of my time in my life where everything was chaos. Everything was turbulent everything had like so much like adrenaline attached to it where that's like that intense fear all the time um and so again that's where it's like taking me time to just chill and to calm down and to release all of that adrenaline from my system release all of that adrenaline from my mind reestablish those um you know, the safety inside of my psyche um, to where I feel safe now to, um, I feel safe mm. now in meditation to connect. Where before, because of this, I felt not safe, right? Because I thought I could trust this person and it turns out I couldn't. And even if it was all energetically, you know, trusting the this person, that was still like, wow, I miss how I misjudged this. I put my faith in someone and something that wasn't I wasn't supposed to. But how else was I supposed to learn this except for going through it? Wow. You know, it, so. it almost it it reminds me of like a recurring dream. You know, if somebody's like afraid to go to sleep because they keep having the same nightmare over and over and over and over again, they might not want want to go to sleep mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah right right so yeah it i have i was having difficulties in wanting to meditate mm. because it didn't feel safe it didn't feel safe to even though it totally is it's all you know fear is the uh false evidence appearing real so it's like it's uh, something that isn't true but it feels like it's true um and just having to overcome that. And a part of that too is having to then mm. again, trust people. But I've had to learn to discern deeper inside of me who I can trust and who mm. isn't mm. worthy mm -hmm. of my trust. I like how you said that, Rachel. You said, I've had to learn to discern. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I must pick it up from someone. <laughs> you know, the, the spirit of discernment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and, and how would you, you know, advise somebody if someone came for counsel, you know, for you, Rachel, and they asked you, you know, how do I get in touch with my internal compass or my divine guidance or, you know, how do I create that for myself? How would you instruct that they that they go about doing that? Well, I would start them off easy, like easy questions, easy things. Um, and first is kind of getting to know your own internal, um, I guess compass is the right way of saying it. So muscle testing is a great way to figure this out. Um, I like to now with muscle testing, I like to stand and then, you know, ask if it's a yes. Cause I also learned that I had to ask pretty much each time. I went back to muscle testing, show me a yes, show me a no. Cause sometimes it's flipped. Don't ask me why, I don't know why, but sometimes it's flipped. So like what usually is a yes was then a no. And then what usually is a no was a yes. So it's like in that moment having to, to discern which one it was. Um, and then, so like even asking simple questions of, you know, holding some food at your heart center and like is is this al in alignment for me to eat and just wait does your body move in that yes does it move in the no and then and, and then the hardest part at least for me was to actually follow through when it was a no like if it's a no just don't just leave it you know but it's like oh but I still want that ice cream why can't I have it no, it's not an alignment for you to eat. So put it back. <laughs> Don't buy it. <laughs> Just leave it at the grocery store. Um, so trust. starting off really simple. 
Yes. The hardest part was the trust, trusting, trusting, and then following through with that. Cause you can override, you can absolutely be like, nah, I'm going to do it anyway. Absolutely. You can do that. You a hundred percent can. So it's the trusting that whatever is that yes, that's in alignment with you, that that is going to actually lead to bigger and better and greater things down the road. It might not in this exact moment, but as you can continue okay. building on it, okay. it will. So you'll eventually connect the dots when you reflect back. You'll be able to see. Yeah. Okay. So it's like trusting that it is leading yeah. you somewhere that that's going to lead you to more freedom, but you have you have to trust that in the yeah. moment. What was one instance where you feel like you you ended up have to you ended up having to be adjusting because you weren't trusting? <laughs> mm. I'm trying to think. Um Well, so I'll give a real example, right? Um, so with food, I've had this whole journey with food, right? And so this is why it's easy for me to ask like, oh, should I eat this? No, okay. And I eat it anyway. I'm like, I'm just gonna eat it anyway. So it's taken some years now where it's like my body doesn't feel as energized. I don't feel like getting up and exercising. So it's like, it just over time, that small accumulation of the doing it anyway has kind of played into where I'm at currently. Now, it doesn't mean that I, it doesn't mean that I can't, you know, from this moment forward, keep doing the things that are good for me. It just means that it's a little bit more challenging too. Whereas if before, or if I had been like, okay, fine, I won't eat that or okay, fine, I'll get up and move even though I'm tired and don't want to. Um, then it would probably, in this moment, be easier for mm. me to do those things. You said something so key there, Rachel. And I, I hope that people are taking notes, you know, whenever they're watching this, because I think that the small accumulation of doing it anyway, that's even, I mean, it sounds like mm -hmm. a book title, the small accumulation of doing it anyway. <laughs> like, where you might end up, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you just did it anyway. Now, now, like you said, for better or worse, you know, on both sides of the spectrum, okay, your intuition is telling mm -hmm. you, your guides are telling you, or something is giving you this feeling that you should be trusting and not just adjusting to this thing that might not be in your highest alignment. And so you know the assignment, you mm -hmm. know this alignment, right? But then you choose to do it anyway, and it's the doing it anyway, but it's because because it's like the small accumulation of of doing it anyways mm -hmm. <laughs> that that lead to the to the big accumulation of having done it anyway and then you realize wow you know it yeah. wasn't overnight nope wow. it definitely wasn't overnight and it definitely is it's almost like yeah we're um <sighs> You know, it's like if you give yourself a tiny little bit of poison, it won't kill you, right? So it's kind of like it's kind of like that. Uh, but over time, over the years, um, it does have an effect. It really does. So I think that there is truth in in um, doing it anyways for the better. It's like, oh, my brain is telling me that I'm too tired to get up. Well, I'm going to get up and do it anyway. Right. So there's power in that as well. Um, yeah. And it is all about building your habit and what is it that you're in the habit mm -hmm. of doing. So, Beautiful distinction. Yeah. You know, I love your illustration. So doing things that, you know, are energy nourishing, energy flourishing and not energy depleting, you know, doing things that are exactly. not defeating, things that are going to empower you and not devour you, right? Yes, yes. And just, you know, yes. using <clears throat> your spirit of discernment, you know, to, to realize that. Mm -hmm. And oh, thank you for this conversation. You know, thank you for all these revelations. I feel like I always love the titling this, like Realizations with Rachel Free, because 
you, you, there's just so many things that you've experienced and that you've gone through that, that I know that this testimony touches someone else's life because it's already touched mine, you know? Wonderful. Thank you. And that is my only hope is like, well, not even hope. I trust. I trust that that the things that I've gone through and the things that I can express help yeah. other people. You, thank you. So, so you know, you. if if there was any way that um, someone might want to reach out to you, they heard this, this is the first time they ever saw you, but they might want to have questions for, you know, where would you like for mm -hmm. people to, to go and, and, and get that? Um, they can find me here on Instagram. So it's uh, free with an I. Because um, that's my last name is free, but it's spelled with an I. People say it free, fray, fro, from, whatever, fry. It's not fry, it's free. Um, so yeah, just send me a, a DM if you have any questions. I'm more than willing to reach out. I love sharing. I love uh, helping. I love helping people kind of have that perspective shift and change in their own you know their own thoughts and their own ways of, of doing things so definitely beautiful beautiful so Instagram. definitely reach out to rachel you know thank you for for caring thank you for sharing and you know thank you for just choosing to dare to make us more aware of the things that have always been there you know Beautifully said. <laughs> Love. Well, I trust this will be the last time. You know, this is this is like number two, the time that we got together. But I'd love to mm -hmm. do this again. I think there's so much more that we could explore. And just thank you for spending the time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for reaching out and asking again. That is, um, and yeah, whenever it feels aligned in the future, just reach out, and I, I'll. I will definitely say yes, as long as it's aligned with that? my energy and what I got going on. Y'all saw that? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. All right. Take care.